I was sitting in the garden one day in, in the summer and it was lovely and sunny and I was just sort of sat there doing a, a little bit of sort of gentle meditation, nothing too heavy. And I just kind of heard this voice saying manifest with colour. And I, and that sort of was just like, oh, what's that? And then the word chromagic popped into my head and I was like, oh, oh, I like that. <laughs> what? And then so, yeah, so then I was just like, oh, what? So that means, yeah, I could use the whole colour, manifesting, blah, blah, blah. and I started sort of just diving into colour therapy and, you know, looking at all the different ways that you can incorporate colour into your sort of manifesting rituals. Hi, Envisionaires. It's Nicole Ningyuan here. Welcome to the Envisionaire podcast. This is the podcast where we envision living our best lives by exploring everyday topics related to health, wealth, and community. On today's episode, we have Carrie Hussein, who is an intuitive artist and founder of Art for the Soul. Carrie creates paintings with purpose, which are intended to be used as a tool for mindfulness, meditation, and manifesting practices. Carrie uses color therapy to help people heal from past traumas and manifest their true intentions. Carrie is regularly invited to speak on color psychology and chromotherapy and has been featured in several magazines, including Psychology, Natural Health, Women's Fitness, and Soul and Spirit. And her art has been featured in Real Homes and 25 Beautiful Homes magazines. So today, Carrie is going to be joining us to speak about her journey of using color to heal her own childhood trauma and also how we can use color as a tool to heal and manifest intentionally. So Carrie, very, very warm welcome to the Envisioner podcast. I'm super excited to have you on. Thank you very much. What a lovely intro. <laughs> I'm very excited to be here. <laughs> Say, well, I'm so impressed with your background and it's so interesting to have, this is such a top, I think it's really becoming a very more mainstream topic and I'm so excited we have an expert to come on and talk to us about this. So cool. Wow. Thank you very much. (laughs) (laughs) So as I was preparing for this episode, I read that you always had a love for art as a child and then life happened as does for so many of us. And It seems that you were disconnected from part of this for a while until you reconnected with it during a very difficult time in your life. Can you share a little bit about your journey to rediscovering your passion? Yeah, of course. So, I mean, the artwork that I do now, the sort of abstract style of art is quite new. Um, I've only really been doing that style for about four or five years and yes I was always artistic as a child I used to love drawing I would just sit in my room for hours just drawing pencil portraits of all my favorite pop stars and celebrities of the time back in the 90s nice nice Um, so yeah but I've realized since going through this healing journey that that was kind of my way of of coping with a lot of the trauma that was going on at the the time. Um, My parents um, split up when I was, uh, I think, seven or eight. Um, And it was a very acrimonious divorce. Um, And then that obviously led on to other traumas as well. Um, I don't really want to go into it too much, but several childhood traumas my dad suffered with poor health um and um yeah it was just a really sort of traumatic time I, I, but I at, I didn't realize it at the time I think it's only later on that I've sort of rediscovered it um and so yeah going going from that to creating abstract is kind of something I never thought I would do um but it's all yeah it's all come about as part of my healing journey uh basically what happened was in I spent a lot of my 30s depressed and just just not really knowing why um on paper everything seemed great you know I had um a good job I was living in a part of London where I'd always wanted to live it was like 
had a, um, you know good friends. I was married. It was all you know on paper. It seemed perfect, and I just couldn't. Well, I was like, why, why do I feel so miserable? And it kind of all just came crashing down um, in 2014. Um, there was some stuff in the news at the time that triggered a lot of repressed emotions in me, and I suddenly had all this stuff just come to the surface um and from my childhood and at the same time my marriage was kind of falling apart and it all just kind of compounded and broke down all at the same time and unfortunately it got it got worse before it got better <laughs> so I spent the next sort of four or five years just spiraling into um, a lot of toxic behavior drugs alcohol that kind of thing a lot of um bad situations um, surrounding myself with the wrong kind of people and it kind of came to a head really I'd, I'd started meditating in about 2018 just as a way of trying to sort of get some kind of control over everything that was happening and I kind of that sort of started me a little bit on this spiritual journey I that was kind of my dark night of the soul period I suppose if you want to go that far but um yeah um the meditation then got stronger and stronger and I just one day I was just like what what can I do and I was somehow guided back to painting um because it was something that I had enjoyed as a child and it kind of brought me that peace and solace in amongst all the chaos when I was younger I just sort of started dabbling again and it was lockdown really in 2020 when everything you know everything stopped and that was kind of my savior really because it meant I had to cut off all the people that were no good for me and I had to stop all the you know all the toxic behavior there was there was nothing else to do and and yeah. so I just threw myself into painting wow. throughout that time um I'm I, I live on my own so there was nothing being being stuck indoors all day <laughs> on my own it was you know was not a lot else to do and I thought well I'm just gonna paint and I just painted my emotions basically and painted my way through and it became a real healing um, kind of process and a therapeutic process for me um, and so that kind of set me on a path to explore more about why art has that kind of effect on people because I'd heard of art therapy and I obviously knew it gave me so much sort of calm and peace mm -hmm. and I wanted to just sort of explore the connection between art and meditation and yeah, I went down a bit of a rabbit hole, as you do. <laughs> and um, yeah, discovered that there are all sorts of um, connections between art and meditation. And it's not even just creating art. You can get the same benefits from just looking at art. And so that was sort of the point where I decided, right, this is what I want to do. I want to, I want to use my artwork to be able to then help other people yeah. who may be suffering, who perhaps aren't creative or don't see themselves as creative or don't want to create their own art. Mm -hmm. They can benefit from the sort of calming, peaceful artwork that I then started to create. I mean, if you if you go back and look through my gallery on my website, you can kind of see the journey, really, because everything's it's it all kind of started off quite dark and moody and stormy and it's all just gradually got lighter and lighter and lighter up to the up to the present day so amazing it's been an interesting interesting journey my style's changing all the time right my general um, palette is neutrals I love working with neutrals but then I I was exploring with color mm -hmm. um, and I love I do love color it's just I find it very, I, I've noticed I find it very hard to work with um, mm. for reasons I'm not quite sure. I haven't quite worked out why, yeah. um, but I always gravitate to, to working with neutrals and I just find it flows so much easier when I work with neutral colours. Well, on that point, I, I, I did go on your gallery and it was beautiful and I like how you had them in different categories. So you had, I think, mm. mindfulness and then... Um, what's the neutrals one so, it's so the neutrals is the meditation collection meditation. so that's yeah that's all really sort of calm and soothing and and uh yeah just neutral kind of tones yes. warm neutrals yeah 
and this this all came about as well because I wanted to use colour but I wasn't sure how to fit it in with the neutral stuff it kind of just didn't sit together because it was I find what what I discovered is that my style changes weirdly when I'm when I'm working with colour it's I, I use a completely different style and so I thought well how this doesn't really work if I put them all together and I had to find a way of splitting them up and I just was like oh yeah mindfulness meditation manifesting and because those are the three sort of pillars um and yeah so I separated the more colorful pieces are now part of the mindfulness collection because they're more layered um more colorful and, and you can really sort of use them to be in the present moment um, and study them yeah and I think when I looked at the manifestation one that was beautiful too because you have so many rich colors these greens these vibrant vibrant colors you know with the gold and just absolutely stunning I really enjoyed how you did that thank and you yeah yeah and so how did you I know you we, we thank you for sharing about the journey and it seems like one of the the pivotal moments was the meditation in 2018 that you you discovered how did you discover that was it someone who advised you to do that or is it I yeah um kind of two things really I sort of heard things about it it was just I think it was kind of just at that point where it was just starting to become a lot more um mainstream and I sort of just thought oh, I'll give it a go I don't really know what what it will do or anything like that and then at the, around about the same time a, um, a colleague of mine um, recommended a book um, called I think it's called how to solve our human problems and it's by a buddhist monk I think Chinese I think a Chinese buddhist monk I, I sort of cited it as the book that changed my life really because it just made so much sense and I was just like oh yeah and it talks about meditation a lot in in that book and I was I sort of put the two together and I was like oh yeah this is great I love it and it just yeah again it just kind of brought me so much peace and just even without any kind of expectations of what I wanted from it it was just nice to just sort of sit with myself in in silence and stillness um and just you know just relax really and and switch off from everything do you know what's funny it's like my own so my mom a few years ago recommended I do the meditation as well when I was going through a really rough time at work so stressful and it was really and then my dad's health was deteriorating at the time and honestly that changed my life the meditation but I will say that I um I had some past trauma as well from like my adolescence and for a long period of time I couldn't be alone in the quietness of it all it's almost like it really gave me more anxiety because I would have to face a lot of the stuff, the trauma that I hadn't had the tools, the therapy, the whatever, the external stuff to actually deal with it. But it wasn't until I would say later in life when I dealt with a lot of the trauma um, that meditation I found was like game changing, like completely changed my life. So I think yeah, that was my thing as well, because I'd done sort of three or four years of counseling yes. prior to that. Yeah. already so I'd already got a lot of the stuff out yes. Yes. so it wasn't quite as scary yeah <laughs> sitting, I... with your, <laughs> sitting with your own demons <laughs> you're like ah I, no. <laughs> yeah yeah but I start I mean I started I, I just googled and I think I found some on YouTube and the, the first one that came up actually was a Bob Proctor one I don't know if you've heard oh, of Bob yeah, Proctor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I love him yeah and it's so it was, it was his abundance meditation I think that came yes. up first I yes I that and then from that, then I discovered um, Vishen Lakhiani from Mind yes. Valley. Yes, love him. Yeah. And I was sort of, I Googled him and I thought, oh, what's this all about? And then I started doing the six phase meditation of his yes. religiously, like every day for about a year or so. Oh, wow. Um, and yeah, and then that's kind of just, it's just kind of gone, the, the sort of personal growth and spiritual journey has just kind of all stemmed from that really and now I'm wow. just I'm obsessed I can't get enough of it I know me <laughs> I think, too yeah me I think I've pretty much read every single book there is out there <laughs> we're gonna have to exchange um some book ideas offline Definitely. yeah <laughs> and so okay so how did you actually like discover the power of color to heal yourself and then subsequently others 
Okay, so that that's kind of a, that's a relatively new thing for me. That's only come about this year, really. Um, so that stemmed from the manifesting sets that I was creating um, as part of my gallery, and um, again, it was it was more about diving into the sort of color psychology and how you can use color to help you manifest and you know the effects it has on you. Um, and when I did the I. I had a stand at the Mind Body Spirit Festival in London in uh, May and the manifesting sets were very popular um so I sort of was thinking oh you know there's there's something in this and so I started sort of thinking about it a little bit more and over the summer I knew I wanted to do something around it but I wasn't quite sure what and how to sort of grow it and make it bigger and this is really strange because this might sound a little bit weird. <laughs> no, tell um, us. But I was sitting, I was sitting in the garden one one uh, one day in in the summer, and it was lovely and sunny, and I was just sort of sat there doing a, a little bit of sort of gentle meditation, nothing too too heavy, and I just kind of heard this voice saying, "Manifest with color," and I, and that wow. sort of was just like, "Oh, what's that?" And then the word chromatic popped into my head. Are you serious? And, yeah, and I was like, "Oh, oh, I like that." <laughs> what? And then so yeah, so then I was just like, "Oh, what?" So that means yeah, I could use the whole color manifesting. Blah, blah, blah. And I started sort of just diving into color therapy and you know looking at all the different ways that you can incorporate color into your sort of manifesting rituals and yeah, just really going deep. So the last sort of six months or so, I've just been researching <laughs> and just learning everything I can really um, because I always knew I wanted to work somehow with color and with paint I always I've always loved seeing color I loved you know I used to love it when um, we had a new term at school and I'd get all my new pencils and they'd be all brand new and sharp and in the right color order and I love going to DIY shop this sounds really sad <laughs> I love going to DIY shops and just looking at all the paint charts um, because I just get so inspired by all the different paint colors that there are out there and so for a long time I sort of thought oh maybe I'm supposed to do something with like interior design or something like that because um, you know I was always interested in that as well and I did go down that route for a little while and I've done a lot of like interior styling and home staging but I kind of sort of it was it wasn't the whole interior stuff I was interested in. It was just the paint colours. Um, and so that having that sort of chromatic inspiration has now given me that link between using colour and the sort of more spiritual, esoteric side of of things as well. So oh, I love that. That's amazing. I, well, I love I love the universal download that you got for chromatic. Yes. I absolutely love that. I, I love a good universal download. I'm always like, tell me more. What should I do? Anyway, so that's really cool. And then, um, yeah, and I just, I love that you then sort of dove into it and, and started researching it. And now, like you're creating these beautiful, mm. beautiful manifesting sets that um, obviously we'll link to and people can check out. But so tell us, okay, before we get into that and how, let's talk about color therapy a little bit. Mm -hmm. I know you, um, well, I've done a little bit of research into it and I, I think I understand that it helps people to either heal or can manifest their own, their own intentions, if you will. But how yeah. do you define color therapy if someone's never heard of this before and what are the key principles? So I've kind of put my own spin on it really in a traditional sense. I think it's, it's about using colored light so you sort of project colored light onto the body and it's the the energy and the frequency and the color that you absorb through your skin that will then help to alleviate whatever sort of ailment that you've got um it's a, it's a practice i think that dates back to sort of ancient egyptian times they used to do it a lot apparently with um using sunlight projected through colored glass it was quite popular in the sort of ayurvedic tradition as well as far as I know so it, yeah that sort of relates to the like balancing of the chakras and um, using color associated with each different chakra um, but I've kind of defined it as 
um, it's more about your emotions rather than a, a physical so, sort of side of things. Um, so I'm using it to sort of help you to embody, to either embody the emotions that you want to feel and amplify those emotions to then help you to manifest whatever it is that you're wanting to manifest. Um, because the key to manifesting really is feeling. Um, and it's about being in that energy of whatever it is that you're trying to manifest. So, for example, if you want, uh, if you're trying to sort of manifest love and a soulmate or something like that, you need to be that energy of love and having lots of pink and red and orange tones around you will then help you to sort of embody that emotion and that feeling. So that's kind of my take on it, really. Yeah, that's really fascinating. And I assume that even ha like having the colors around is maybe one part of the piece. But like, as you said, feeling it and really intentionally focusing on it is probably also another part. Is that right? Yeah, I think because um, color, it carries an energy and a frequency. And, you know, and so we can absorb those frequencies. And then that helps to then sort of then you will then resonate on that frequency to then attract whatever it is that you're trying to attract that's 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 the idea anyway I think so um Carrie which colors are the highest vibrating and lowest vibrating then you've got your sort of general color if you think of the colors of the chakras so you've got red is your root chakra and then or it goes orange yellow green uh blue uh, is it indigo by a purple and then it's the crown is indigo or what I always see the crown as white but some people have it as indigo anyway so if you think of it that way your red is the lowest vibrational color it's the longest wavelength on the spectrum um, and it is associated with quite a lot of low vibrational emotions like anger rage shame um those kinds of lower sort of lower vibrational emotions um and the highest i think the lighter you get the higher vibrational the colors are so sort of um obviously white is probably the highest vibrational color um because it, it it's all the colors really <laughs> um and then yeah sort of like a violet or something like that which is highly spiritual um, that's a very high vibrational color but um, what I've learned actually is that it's sort of split into two so you've got your uh, your magnetic colors and then your electrical colors and then green is kind of the neutral in the middle the heart chakra so the the yellow orange and red would be the magnetic colors because they're drawing you down to the earth and they're rooting you into the earth Whereas the electrical colours are the lighter colours, like the blues, indigo, purple, that are taking you up. So that's how I like to sort of think of it. And then green. Green is basically kind of a neutral colour in the middle. Right. Oh, that's so fascinating. And when mm, with the higher vibration, because I know and, and I know that there's also different colours that can also you can try and focus on in order to let's say if you're trying to intentionally attract different things, for example, like you said, love, a soulmate, money, et cetera. But for example, like if you wanted to attract, let's say more money, I understand it to be green. Is that right? Mm -hmm. I was at green, not all shades of green. I would say, I would say probably like quite a rich, vibrant green um, is probably the best Okay. For manifesting money. Whereas a lighter, maybe more kind of sage or a jade green, that's more associated with kind of calmness and relaxation. Okay. Um, but yeah, more vibrant, a more vibrant green. Vibrant green. Say. Okay. And then let's say you mix that with the vibrational aspect. So now it's like, let's say you had like white and green. What mm -hmm. is that? Is that basically saying, like, can you start doing that in order to even like take it? To the next level and start saying yeah I don't see I don't see why not no one's ever no one's ever suggested that before <laughs> so yeah I guess you can sort of mix mix colors depending on what 
energies you want to yeah you want to feel so interesting really. mm. and then like what if you like if you if you were trying to <laughs> this is going to the next level <laughs> chakras like in my mind if the head is the highest then like mm -hmm. what if you put like something green and white on your like towards the, the head chakra yeah that be even we're really then we're like building off that's so interesting so yeah yeah and obviously because green is the color of the heart chakra so you want to feel that energy as well the the right. energy of the money you know the energy of the abundance and the wealth and be sure. open opening your heart up to receiving it yes so love that and so how can we now I'm sure a lot of listeners are going, yes, I love this. Tell me more. So how can we start to harness or use color therapy today to manifest our intentions? Well, there's a few there's a few different ways you can kind of incorporate color into different rituals that you may have. Um, one I like to do is um, scripting is quite a popular manifesting tool. Um, so I would say, you know, if you are scripting anything and writing anything down, journaling, anything like that, use the colour pen or the colour ink of what it is that you're trying to sort of manifest. So again, if you're, you know, if you're wanting abundance and wealth and luck and money and things like that, use green, a green pen. It's just simply, it just helps to sort of your subconscious to absorb that energy. Um and same for, for love, if you wanted love, you would use a red pen or a pink pen. You can use colour affirmations, which are quite good as well. Can you tell us what they are? What's a colour affirmation? So colour affirmations are basically things like saying, I am embracing the energy of orange to fuel my creativity. And you can write out different affirmations that use the properties of the colours that you know for the emotions or the feelings that you want to enhance and then again it just helps your subconscious to absorb those those emotions and feelings so I've created I have actually created a few sort of meditations on my YouTube channel um, that. Yes, which, beautiful. yeah which <laughs> I'm in the process of rebranding it so I haven't done any for a while but they will be I will be starting up again in the in the new year but yeah. um but yeah and, and the visuals sort of using the visuals as well while you're doing that yeah to sort of then take in those colors through your eyes yes absolutely and for those who I know you talked about scripting but I mm -hmm. I think most people would know what it is but can you just touch on that a little bit as well for those who yeah so sc scripting is just where you you're writing down what it is that you want to manifest but you're writing it as though it's already happened so for example I am living in my dream house with my soulmate and blah 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 okay so you, gotcha. just, you write it you write it in the present tense as though it's already happened and we're using color therapy as you mentioned in order to yeah. do that to script as well yeah and yeah. um with your visual meditations which I found were I think they're really really great I loved it I love listening to them um do you suggest that they like are fixated on the screen? Because just for those who haven't checked it out yet, obviously go check it out. But, you know, it's very vibrant, right? Like, for mm. example, the finance financial one I, I saw, it was like very green, vibrant. Do you suggest people look at it or are they better to close their eyes? How do they do that? I had originally I created them with the intention of being a visual meditation. So um, it, it was sort of, a way of people being able to sort of focus on on the colors and the you know the, the artwork in the present moment to help them keep stay in the present moment um for people that sort of find traditional meditation a bit difficult if they get distracted easily it's it's easier if you're focusing on something so that was the original intent but as as um as i've gone on and created more of the color ones they can be used Obviously, you can sit and just watch them or you can then, you know, you can watch them for a while. And then if you find yourself sort of drifting off to mm -hmm. sleep or whatever, just visualize that. Keep visualizing that color in your mind. Mm -hmm. um, it mm -hmm. just sort of helps to stabilize it and yeah. you know, really embed it in. We have a question from an Envisioner listener, actually, mm -hmm. who I had been talking. <laughs> I'd been speaking about um, you coming on and talking about this topic. And mm -hmm. she was very keen. Her name is Fatima. And she was asking, she said, she said that she had an aura um, reading assessment done. Oh, right. Yeah. Yes. And she was told she has a lot of 
green in her aura, which is apparently very, very good, that we're very excited for her. So right. she, she wanted to know what else she could do to harness either her own colors in, in it, like to bring that out even more or use external colors or what exercises she could do to kind of enhance that. And I don't know whether or not that's something that you're familiar with. Yeah, I'm not too familiar with the sort of aura color side of things. I think there's sort of, with auras, I think there's this sort of slightly different meaning. I'm not, I'm not too sure. Um, but if she wanted to sort of embody a certain emotion with it with the green like if she wanted to feel energized or um or if she wanted to feel sort of again you know using a lighter shade of green if you wanted to feel more relaxed and soothed you can always create what I like to do is create sort of a little kind of um altar or a sort of little meditation space using different sort of trinkets and things like that in that space in that color so I've got for example I've got my abundance corner in my <laughs> in my living room which I've sort of designated based on feng shui and I have worked out where my abundance corner is so in that corner I've got like lots of little green and gold trinkets I've got a little green and gold painting from my manifesting collection and um, some coins and things like that so you can just sort of create a little a little space with the colors of of that whatever it is that you're trying to sort of manifest or embody in that in that space well that's actually a really good segue because we have one more final question from an envisioner mm -hmm. another one and um that person asked how they would use like color or color therapy with regards to their like decor if that makes sense like mm -hmm. coming into the house especially and I think, yeah. I don't know whether or not that's an overlap of the Feng Shui or not. Um, appreciate that's a different, probably a different episode. But yeah. <laughs> do you have any advice for kind of when people come in and and how they can use that yeah. kind of color therapy? I can suggest a few things. So this is where my sort of interior styling background comes in handy. <laughs> um, because I've, I've obviously done a lot of sort of, research around color in the home and things like that and I think a lot of people tend to decorate based on how how it looks and I think what you need to do really is choose your colors based on how you want to feel when you're in that space um so yeah you can I mean you don't have to go all out and completely redecorate everything you can obviously introduce different touches again like artwork or you know a, a, some some cushions or a throw or something in in the particular colors that you want or you could just paint like paint one wall or something um but yeah I mean different colors have different effects obviously um and it is it is purely down to how you want to feel when you're in that space so for example for me my bedroom is white it's all white because I liked it, I like it to be nice and sort of just calming and soothing. I find white is is probably my most sort of calming color. A lot of people would find it too cold and clinical. No, I but, like um, it too. I like white. Mm, yeah. So so I've got you know my bedroom is all is all white, but some people might prefer a dark blue or something like that. Blue is a very restorative and healing color. Yeah. Also good for you know good for helping you to sleep as well. So blue is a good color for for bedrooms um, and you might see a lot of red perhaps in dining rooms um, mm. red is a good color for dining rooms because it's it's a stimulant it and it apparently stimulates the appetite <laughs> which um, not quite sure about but <laughs> when you think about it a lot of restaurants and fast food chains all use red in their in their logos and their branding right. so there's obviously something in it <laughs> of course yeah yeah yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> And it, you know, it's stimulating. So if you if you're having dinner parties and things like that, you want that sort of stimulating color to you know keep the conversation going and things like that. Oh, I like that. I would think mm. it would be the opposite because, like in my mind, I want to stop eating. But... <laughs> 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 like not, a... but I like that. I like that definitely as yeah. a, as a convivial <laughs> color, absolutely. And so, and how? And this is my one of my questions. Is um, I appreciate we're talking about it in the context of art and your beautiful. Mm -hmm 
pieces, but how about clothing? Like, would you, if someone's listening and they're, they want to maybe start by putting on, you know, again, a nice bright pink sweater because they want more love and so on. Exactly. Yeah. You can, you can bring, bring it in in any way you choose really it's entirely up to you I mean yeah if you want if you you know or for example if you had a, a meeting and you needed to feel confident and want you know had to give a presentation or something blue again blue but perhaps a lighter brighter blue is quite good for that so you might sort of want something in that color just to sort of give you that that little boost um orange like you've got on today to yeah it worked for you yeah, oh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, or, well, orange is a great color for creativity. So, oh, but there you go. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> so, before we move on to the final segment of the Envisioner questionnaire, can we just run mm -hmm. through the main key colors again? So, for everyone listening, because I'm sure you've given us so much advice and so much interesting food for thought. I just want to make sure that people actually remember the colors. So can we just kind of run through them quickly um, and what they mean? Yeah. Um, so your basic sort of spectrum or the colors that you have on the color wheel. So what have we got? We've got, let's start with red. So as we said, red is for, it. I mean, all colors, no color is good or bad, but colors, they do have a sort of positive negative side a little bit. So I would say... Red, you know, obviously is associated with love and passion and sort of um, just stimulation, like we said. Um, but again, it, it's kind of negative side would be anger and and sort of rage and that kind of thing. So it's very um, it's very important that you kind of balance and don't use too much of something. I mean, yellow, for example. Um, you know most people would associate yellow with being happy and you know really optimistic sort of color but too much yellow can really overstimulate the nervous system um so you don't want too much yellow around especially in you know bedrooms or you know places where you want to relax um so where were we orange as I said orange is great for creativity and expression um it's the sort of fun playful pleasure zone it's the color of the sacral chakra which is the pleasure pleasure zone um but the opposite side of orange it can be um quite draining it can be sort of um seen as a little bit immature perhaps sometimes um and uh i don't like the word cheap but cheap <laughs> um if you think of sort of budget like budget brands and budget things they're generally like an orange um you they use a lot of orange um green again green it depends as with all colors it depends on the on the shade really but green is generally a sort of uh energizing vitalizing it's the color of life really isn't it like leaves grass trees um so it's a it's a very sort of life-giving uh, color um, but also you know more muted shades will be soothing relaxing blue light blue for sort of is a great color for sort of finding clarity communication um, connection that kind of thing information sort of and confidence as well so again a lot of uh, a lot of sort of communications companies will use blue and a sort of really bright bright blue in their logos um whereas a darker blue is as i said earlier more sort of restorative and healing um but again you have to be careful with that because some people could find that sort of blue a bit depressing and a bit sort of it, it could sort of be a bit overwhelming and bring them down and you know, we will say, "Oh, I'm feeling a bit blue <laughs> today." Mm, yeah, <laughs> yeah, so yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to, you have to be careful. Um, what haven't I covered? Purple, <laughs> Pur purple. So purple is um, a, uh, is a highly spiritual color, probably the most spiritual color. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's all just it's just lovely. I love purple. Me too. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's kind of associated with royalty and just luxury really mm. um not too sure of the negative sides of purple I have to admit 
Um, it's generally, I think it's generally sort of seen as a quite a positive color. Um, What's a good uh, one for good health? Um, probably blue, blue and green, I would say. Any specific um, shades? Um, green, any, any shade of green really would be, would be a good health, uh, sort of perhaps a darker forest kind of green would be nice. Um, and blue, I would say not too dark, but not too, not too bright, perhaps a mid, a mid blue, let's say. <laughs> I don't really know how to describe <laughs> <laughs> so not a royal blue, blue. <laughs> not a royal blue. not a royal blue but not a not a sort of navy blue somewhere in between like a yeah. blue like this maybe do you think or is that too um, sorry i'm pointing towards the logo the, po- the podcast logo oh yeah no it, well that it, to, on my screen that looks more purple actually but okay. um yeah i'm trying to think maybe like a denim blue oh okay that makes sense yeah, yeah, yeah sort yeah. of like a denim like a denim blue Okay, mm. so put on your jeans. Yeah, <laughs> if you want to feel good. <laughs> Love it. Oh, this is amazing. Thank you so much. Carrie, you are like a wealth of knowledge, and I'm so oh, interested in this. And I think so many people listening will be so interested. And so we will definitely set out how they can hear more about you. Uh, mm. But we're going to go to the Envisioner questionnaire now before we yes. do that. <laughs> and this is a fun feature of the podcast where we ask guests to reflect on their past present and future. And so looking Mm -hmm. towards your past, if you could give your 15 year old self any advice, oh, what would it be and why? I love this question. (laughs) I think I would say two things. I would say, don't be afraid to speak up. Don't be afraid to, you know, show yourself really. Um, And don't hide, don't be invisible. And the other thing I would say is don't pluck your eyebrows. <laughs> they will never come back. <laughs> but there was a time, I think when I was just becoming a teenager where, you know, yeah. it was the thin eyebrows and as thin as you I could know. go. As I thin- had them. I had the pencil eyebrows and I regret it so much. <laughs> Your eyebrows look great. Your eyes look great. <laughs> I draw them on that. <laughs> Uh, good advice good advice I'm sure lots of 15 year olds listening would be like okay yeah that makes sense (laughs) what were you guys doing back in the day I know back in the oh my god the 90s were just crazy (laughs) Uh, okay so reflecting in the present moment if there was Mm -hmm. any advice that you could seek like over a dinner table who would it be oh gosh who would it be mm-hmm. oh that's a really good one I don't know I'd probably just want to pick the brains of all the sort of spiritual teachers out there yeah. um people yeah. like Deepak Chopra and Gabby Bernstein um just oh, I'd love to have spoken to Wayne Dyer but oh I know oh my gosh that would have just been the best I know. Um, but yeah, probably just all the all those all those guys really that are out there doing that thing. I love it. Um I just want to yeah. immerse myself in their knowledge. <laughs> totally. I am um, I heard there's um a podcast that I listen to, Ed Milet. I don't know if you know him, but he's Yes, I yes, do. I listen yeah, to him a bit. Yeah, yeah, I love him. He's so good. And I remember mm. he shared his story about how he ran past Wayne Dyer on the beach. Yes, only in California that. right you're just yes. running over a morning run as you do yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly as you do right like <laughs> and um he and then he was like Mr. Dyer or Wayne I don't know how you pronounce it and then and then yeah. like he was so Wayne was so humble and so kind and just basically stopped and they sat together for an hour and just talked mm. and it was one of the most beautiful moments he for him so I mean I know Wayne Dyer oh, just so amazing yeah that would have been amazing okay well looking towards the future what's one goal you would like to achieve in the next five years that you want to share with us oh wow I have grand plans uh, yay for Crow Magic yes so my my biggest goal at the moment is to write a book oh yes so, good yeah I, I I've always wanted to write a book but I've never known what I would write it about so this this seems like it's the perfect sort of topic 
Amazing. For me. So I'm, that's what I'm manifesting Love over it. the next year or two. <laughs> I am so excited for you. And will it be more of like a memoir or more of like the actual looking into the color, color therapy? Yeah. My idea at the moment is to sort of just base it around manifesting with color. Oh my gosh. I love it. I can't wait that to was, buy it. That was what was given to me in my download. It was like, this is your book title. So <laughs> I can't wait to buy it, Carrie. <laughs> oh, let's do another podcast when it comes out. A hundred percent. Yes, <laughs> definitely. Right. Well, thank you so much, Carrie, for being on the podcast. We thank just you. loved having you. And for anyone who would like to connect with Carrie, and I encourage you to do so, her website is www.carriehussein.com. Her social media, she's on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube. So on Instagram, she's at for the soul, is it underscore 11? Yeah, art for the soul, underscore 11. Yeah. And then uh, also Chromagic, which is the new project where she's really diving deep into color therapy, which is awesome. So that's C-H-R-O-M-A-G-I-K. So yeah. Chromagic. Uh, give her a follow on there and she's on Facebook art for the soul one 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 and then on YouTube she's at for the soul underscore 11 it is at the moment but it will be changing to crow magic so okay yeah. all right so uh, yeah, watch the space and we'll so put all the links the so my yeah my art gallery is at kerryhussain.com and all the color therapy info will be on chromagic.com amazing well everyone should go check it out and um i'll put everything in the show notes um as i always do and thank you again so much carrie for being on the podcast and being so generous with all of your so advice much. i can't wait oh. to start implementing all the color stuff now <laughs> color therapy thanks to carrie yeah i hope it's been useful it thank has so been much. thank been you fun. so much lots of fun. amazing all right Mwah. lots of love thank you bye if you want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit subscribe and check out this video here.